This lecture deals with linear regression. Key topics include slope and intercept, linear relationships, error, the method of ordinary squares, and model fit, which is assessed by something called the coefficient of determination, or r squared. So in a previous lecture, we used covariance and correlation as measures of association for interval ratio variables. In this lecture, we're going to look at an alternative approach called linear regression analysis. Uh, linear regression is another technique for measuring the association between interval ratio variables and attempts to fit a linear line to the relationship between one or more independent variables and a single dependent variable. A common starting point is to use something called a scatter diagram or what's known also as, as a scatter plot. And this is a graph that plots the values of the independent variables against the values of the dependent variables. As an example of this lecture, consider the relationship between response education as a dependent variable and father's education as an independent variable for 100 cases from the general social survey. So this figure shows the diagram uh, relating response education to father's education. Notice uh, on the horizontal or x-axis, uh, we have the, fire, the father's highest degree earned. And then on the y-axis, or the uh, vertical axis, we have values of the dependent variable, highest year of school completed for respondent. And notice that each of the dots marks the location of these two variables for every given case. Uh, here we see that there's a positive relationship between father's education and response education. Notice that as father's education increases, so does respondent's education. But we need some kind of more systematic way to relate the value of the independent variable, x, and the value of the dependent variable, y. And in linear regression modeling, we can use a linear relationship to approximate that association. Uh, in other words, we can use a line that provides us with the prediction of the value of the dependent variable for any given value of the independent variable. And so he, this figure shows a line that's arbitrarily chosen and superimposed to show the relationship between father's education and respondent's education. So notice that the line gives us a, a prediction of the value of the dependent variable for any value of the independent variable. So for example, if we wanted to get the predicted value for someone who has 10 years of education for their father, uh, we see that the line predicts that they have an education of about 13.29 years. What about for a value of 15 years for the father's education? Well, the line predicts that that person would have 14.83 years of education. However, we could use any number of lines to, to describe the relationship between the two variables, as we'll see in the next slide. So how do we know which line to choose? And in general, what are the characteristics of these lines? So this figure shows three different lines trying to describe the relationship between father's education and response education. How are these lines different? Well, notice that for one thing, uh, they cross the y-axis at different points. And so the location where these lines cross the y-axis is something that we can call an intercept, which I'm going to uh, symbolize as beta 0. The other difference between these lines is they have a different pitch or slope, uh, indicating how much uh, more or less the, the response education increases as the response education increases, as the father's education increases. And I'm going to symbolize slope using the parameter beta 1. So basically, we can describe any line in terms of two parameters. It's intercept, beta 0, and that's where it crosses the y-axis or its slope, beta 1, which describes the, the pitch or steepness of the line. Another question is, are any of these lines acceptable? Well, notice that regardless of which line we pick, uh, not all the points will fall exactly on the line. That is, there's going to be discrepancy between the actual values of the dependent variable and the predicted values falling on the line for any given case. And so therefore, how do we know which line fits best? Well, first, let's consider an example of a line that, that perfectly fits a linear relationship. The conversion of, uh, say, temperature from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. So notice that we could fit a, fu a function to the relationship between temperature and degrees Celsius and temperature and degrees Fahrenheit. If we take the degrees uh, Celsius, multiply them by 9 fifths and add 32, that gives us our degrees Fahrenheit. And so here, 32 would be our intercept, 9 fifths would be our slope. And so we could plot the line relating temperature in degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit uh, using that, that functional relationship. And so you can see that this line gives us a prediction uh, of degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. And we can see that there's one temperature in degrees Celsius and only one temperature in degrees Celsius for each temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 
And so for example, uh, a value of 40 for degrees Celsius, if we plug that value into the equation, would generate uh, a predicted value of, de of degrees Fahrenheit of 104. And so basically, this is an exact straight line relationship. Now in the social sciences, we rarely find these perfect associations. So the question is, how do we find the values of the slope and intercept for the line that best fits the data, uh, given that not all the points are going to fall exactly on the line? Well, in choosing the best fit line, uh, we have a certain aim. That is, we strive to minimize error, or the discrepancy between the observed values of the dependent variable, let's call those y, uh, that is for a given independent variable, and the predicted values of the dependent variable, let's call that y hat. And so we can actually write a, a linear regression equation relating the predicted value of the dependent variable, y hat, to the actual value of the independent variable, x. And that equation is the following. We can say that y hat is equal to beta 0, the intercept, plus beta 1, the slope, times the value of x, the independent variable. Now, if we define the re linear regression equation in that way, uh, we can also define a discrepancy between what the line predicts and the actual values of the dependent variable. Let's call that residual, or error. And let's symbolize that using the Greek letter epsilon, with a hat over it to indicate that it's, a, it's an estimate. So uh, our error, or residual, is going to be equal to the actual value of the dependent variable minus the predicted value of the dependent variable, y hat. And so returning to our earlier example, um, notice that if we drew a line to this equation, again, we could get a predicted value for, of the dependent variable for any level of the independent variable. And, and last time we saw that we had a predicted value of 13.29 for the dependent variable when the independent variable, in this case father's education, was equal to 10. But is there some discrepancy between uh, that value, 13.29, and the actual value of a case that has a, a father's education of 10 years? Well, we can see that, that, that there is. In fact, uh, there's a case here that has an actual value of, of response education of 11 for a value of father's education that's equal to 10. And so that's a little bit different from the predicted value. In fact, the model here over predicts that, that uh, person's value. And so you can see that we can find for this case a discrepancy between its actual value of education, 11 years, and its predicted value, 13.29, uh, when the independent variable is equal to 10 years of father's education. And so 11 minus the predicted value, 13.29, is negative 2.29. And so what we're trying to do um, in finding the line that best fits the data is that we're trying to minimize the error or residual across all cases. Uh, that is not just that one case, but across all the cases in, in, in the data set that we're using. And we're going to use something called uh, ordinary least squares to estimate the values of the slope and intercept that minimize the, the residual or discrepancy, not just for a single case, but across all cases. And so this figure basically illustrates that uh, using a diagram. And so here you can see that we have a scatter plot with the best fit line superimposed on it. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find the line that minimizes the distance between what the line predicts and the actual values of the dependent variable across all cases. And those, those differences or discrepancies are called residuals. And so we're trying to, to mim minimize all of the residuals. Now, unfortunately, this line is a kind of average. And so if we take and we sum all the residuals, uh, and we subtract the value of, of the predicted values that come from the line, it would always sum to zero. And so what we have to do, in fact, is we have to exaggerate some of the differences between the discrepancies between what the line predicts and the actual values of the, of the dependent variable so that they don't sum to zero. And we do that by squaring. And so what we try to do when we estimate the values of the slope and intercept that, that uh, best fit the data is we have to try to find the, the values of the slope and intercept that minimize the squared residuals or the sum of squared residuals, right? So uh, recalling that the residual is equal to the difference between the actual value of the dependent variable and the predicted value, in order for them to, uh, sum to something other than zero, we have to square them. And so this ordinary least squares procedure tries to minimize the sum of the squared residuals. And now typically the, the easiest way to dis explain how we find the values of the slope and intercept that minimize the sum of squared residuals is to use differential calculus. Although, that's a little bit complicated. And so, another way to do it is to use these calculating formulas. And so, these calculating formulas show us 
uh, how to calculate the slope, beta 1, and the intercept, beta 0, uh, using a combination of variances and covariances and mean values. And so you can see from the formulas that beta 1, the slope, is equal to the covariance of x and y divided by the variance of the independent variable x. And then once we have the slope, uh, we can estimate the intercept. And so the intercept is going to be equal to uh, the mean of the dependent variable minus the product of the slope, beta 1, times the mean of the, the independent variable, x. And the reason that we can get the slope in this way is because the regression line always includes the point that has the means of both variables. So this table shows a variance-covariance matrix of education and father's education. So uh, on the main diagonal are values of the variances. So the variance for education is 10.29. Uh, the variance for father's education is 19.68. And then on the off diagonals are covariances. And so the covariance of education and father's education here is going to be 6.68. I also show the means of both variables, and so the mean for education is going to be 13.65, and the mean for father's education is going to be 11.27. And so let's calculate the, the slope and the intercept for uh, our example, uh, corresponding to the line that best fits the data. And so basically we can take um, the covariance of the two variables, 6.68, and divide it by the variance of the independent variable, father's education, or 19.068. And that gives us the, the slope of the regression line that best fits the data. It's equal to 0.35. Once we have the slope, we can use that value to calculate the intercept. So if we take our slope, beta 1, multiply it by the mean of the independent variable, father's education, or 11.27, and we subtract that product from the mean of the dependent variable, or education, 13.65, uh, that gives us the intercept, which in this case turns out to be 9.70. And so how do we... we um, interpret these values? Well, first of all, uh, notice that uh, we can write our regression equation in the following way. Uh, we can write y hat, the predicted value of the response education, uh, as a function of the intercept, 9.70, plus the value of the slope, 0.35, times the value of the independent variable. And notice that if we plug in any value for, for x, the independent variable, that will give us a predicted value of the dependent variable. So for example, let's say we wanted to figure out what, what the uh, value of the dependent variable is predicted to be when the value of the, the independent variable is at its mean. And remember, the mean level of education for the father was 11.27 years. So for a father with an average education of 11.2 years, we're going to plug that formula into the equation for x, multiply that by 0.35, and then add 9.70. And the value that we get as a prediction is 13.65, which is the mean of y. Right? So that, that again shows that the regression equation always includes the means of both variables. So we can plot our uh, regression equation. Uh, and this, this I'm claiming is the regression equation that best fits the data. That is, that it minimizes the discrepancy between the, what the line predicts for the de dependent variable and the actual value of the dependent variable across all cases. Now let's interpret the slope and the intercept. So the slope basically tells us how much the predicted value of the dependent variable changes for a change in the independent variable. And that's usually interpreted as a change in the unit increase in the dependent variable. Uh, the intercept is the predicted value when the dependent variable is set to zero. And this is usually of less interest in the slope, but it can be useful in some cases. And so let's start with the slope. Uh, here we have a slope of 0.35. So here's the interpretation for the slope. For a unit increase in the father's education, uh, remember that the father's education is, is uh, measured in terms of years. That is, so for a one-year increase, uh, we find that the respondent's education is predicted to increase by about 0.35 years, or a little over a third of a year. Well, what about the intercept? And the intercept basically is the value of the, the predicted value of the dependent variable when the independent variable is set to zero. And so when we set x equal to zero, uh, the term on, on the left of, of the, uh, the equation drops out. And so what we're left with is the predicted value of the dependent variable equals 9.70. In other words, somebody who has a father who has zero years of education is predicted to have about 9.7 years of education. What about the model fit? Um, so far, we've predicted uh, how a, a value of the independent variable gives us a predicted value of the dependent variable. But how accurate is that prediction? Uh, put differently, how well does our model fit the data? 
Well, we can determine that by using something called the coefficient of determination, r squared. Uh, this is a measure of how much of variation in the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. It's a measure that ranges from 0 to 1. 0 indicates a worse fit, and 1 indicates the best possible fit. Usually, r squared takes on intermediate values between 0 and 1, and is usually expressed as a percent by multiplying it by 100. And so here's the calculating formula for calculating the coefficient of determination. In the numerator, we have the covariance of the two variables, x and y. And so um, if we square it, and then we divide it by the product of the variances of the two variables, that is the variance of x times the variance of y, that gives us the value of r squared. And so for our example, uh, remember that we had a covariance of the two variables is 6.68. So if we square that value and we multiply it by the variance of the independent variable, father's education, 19.068, times, times the variance of response education, 10.29, uh, we get a value of 0.227. And so what does that tell us? Well, we could say that uh, approximately 27% of the variation in education is explained by father's education. And since that's closer to zero than it is to one, that indicates sort of a weak to moderate fit. And you might be wondering, why is that so low? Well, there's several other factors that uh, determine someone's level of education other than their father's education. And so there's other factors that we haven't accounted for, uh, which makes the, the explained variance somewhat low.